In this presentation, I will explain the design of an extremely compact implementation of Scheme supporting a REPL. My name is Samuel Yvon, and this work was done at the University of Montreal with Professor Mark Feely. So as you know, the design of a virtual machine may be optimized for various properties. Any virtual machine will choose to optimize for execution speed and memory usage, but in our work, we are primarily interested in minimizing the footprint of the executable and having an easily portable virtual machine. So it may seem natural to aim for speedy virtual machine with small memory usage, as this naturally aligns with the commercial goals of uh, fast transaction processing. However, this does not mean that optimizing for size or portability is not useful. Many environments like low-cost microcontrollers are still highly limited in terms of available memory, whether it be code or live data, and are still mainly uh, programmed using languages like C or even platform-specific machine code. Languages embedded in other systems also benefit from being small as to not load the original program with code that may be unused. Programs distributed over a network, like in the case of internet pages, also benefit from being from having a small uh, footprint as the limiting factor in terms of speed is oftentimes the, net the network. This enables a smaller load time and ultimately more responsive web browsing for everyone. So as you may imagine, limiting the footprint of a virtual machine and aiming for portability across multiple uh, platform is not an entirely new goal. So uh, we show here a few implementation of programming languages that are meant to be embedded in other system and also try to limit the footprint. So the first top of the table at, two, at 310 uh, kilobyte is the Lua programming language, which is embedded in a lot of uh, video games. Uh, then tiny scheme at 255 kilobyte is the scheme implementation found in the GIMP uh, software suite. And uh, the, this scheme implementation is used to provide uh, user-definable uh, image transformations. Uh, a bit lower down the table, we find MicroPython at 52 kilobytes, which is a embedded implementation of the Python programming language for microcontrollers. At 52 kilobytes, this is starting to be in the realm of acceptable for microcontrollers. And finally, at the bottom of the table, uh, you find our own implementation of a small scheme virtual machine, the Ribbit virtual machine. At a footprint of in between 4 and 8 kilobytes, this is uh, quite, quite a bit smaller than the rest of the implementations found in this, in this table. In fact, the uh, Ribbit virtual machine uh, only by itself is around 2 kilobytes of executable code. And like I said, depending of the, uh, of the library you link the program with, you may find, you may find the size of the REPL Within the with the uh, virtual machine is in between four and eight uh, kilobytes of executable code. You might be wondering um, what does four kilobytes of uh, a virtual machine look like, and uh, here is the compiled JavaScript virtual machine uh, with the sections highlighted so we can see uh, what it looks like. So in yellow you have the uh, encoded REPL program. And the first section here with the red text is the encoded symbol table. So you will only have this section if the symbols need to be exported textually to the user. For in this example, the because we are using the REPL, the user will need to reference the symbol by name. So this is why the symbols are encoded this way. And in red and blue, you have the sections for um, decoding the previous uh, section here in yellow. So So the program can have a representation it can manipulate of uh, the, the code being uh, run. And in, in green here, you have the uh, actual code for the virtual machine at only 850 bytes, uh, give or take, that actually executes the entire program and perform all the operation uh, you would expect a virtual machine to execute. You may notice I skipped over a section, uh, which is this one here. The section in gray is the console emulation. And in fact, if you take this whole JavaScript uh, snippet and insert it in between two script tag and make a web page out of that, you will find that you have a running virtual a running uh, virtual machine of scheme in a REPL in a web page. So in fact, this is what we did with this slide here. Uh, we embedded the previously shown uh, JavaScript version in the slide system and did some small modifications so it works in our environment here. Just define the Fibonacci function here and see that it is inserted inside the symbol table. And then we can actually refer to it by name and see that the computation of Fibonacci 30, 30th number, uh, actually does work and give out a result, which I will let the listener verify. And um, let me understand how this entire system works. Let's see at the bird's eye view. 
So the two main parts are the Ribbit Scheme Compiler, which will take a scheme program and uh, convert it to a form suitable for the virtual machine uh, to execute. Of course, the second part of this program is uh, the Ribbit Virtual Machine, uh, which will take the uh, output of the compiler and execute it. However, the compiler does a bit more than just transform the source program. It also links the source program with the runtime library of your choice. So if you select uh, more features or less features, they will be bundled with your program. And it does some optimization that pertain to uh, limiting the code size. One of these optimization is dead code uh, analysis, which means that if you do not, you do not reference uh, some features of the runtime library, they will not be bundled in the executable program. So for example, uh, one feature that the REPL will execute will require is the incremental compiler so it can compile uh, the expressions entered by the user. But in a regular program, you probably will, won't need that function, so it won't be bundled with your program. This has the effect of uh, limiting the uh, footprint of the final program. So the Ribbit uh, scheme system uh, is implemented in multiple languages. So to start off, the C version is a uh, used so we can really refer to what it would look like on a microcontroller in a resource constrained environment in, in the executable form. Whereas the JavaScript version is more to test with the web pages or embedded in, embedded in other documents. The Python and Scheme implementation are also uh, included so we can evaluate for size and performance. Of course, the ahead of time compiler as well, all the library files are written in. Maybe wondering why uh, Scheme is the uh, language we chose to to write a VM for, and uh, there's many reasons, but it boils down to the fact that Scheme is a small specification and it is quite simple. And this small specification translates well to a simple virtual machine with a few uh, primitive operation and primitive function required for it to execute properly. Uh, however, the choice of Scheme comes with some non-trivial features to implement. So uh, we have garbage collection to implement, we have tail call optimization and first class continuation. And these functionalities uh, are not trivial to implement in the limited code size. So um, I mentioned that depending on the feature set you select, the uh, final size of the executable will be uh, different. Right now, we provide two runtime library, which are the minimum runtime library and the maximum runtime library. The minimum runtime library will provide um, the necessary set of features so you can implement most of what you would need for a scheme program. and in counterpart, the maximum library will support most of the R4RS procedures uh, without anything that pertains to I.O. Uh, because we uh, have a full REPL implementation, we require uh, two, two I.O. primitives, namely read and, and input. So uh, these are the only I.O. primitives implemented in our system. So maybe to talk a bit about the design of our system, um, let's start with um, how we represent data. In Ribbit, uh, every data is organized within a rib, which is a, a structure we created for this implementation. And the rib is a tree field data structure uh, that is very versatile. Every field in a rib can be either a reference to a rib or a native uh, integer. And the idea behind the rib is that uh, because every field can be a reference to another rib, we can chain them and combine them as uh, we wish. And this allows us to represent the program source uh, once decoded by the uh, virtual machine as a linked uh, chain of ribs. And this program stack while executing is also a, a linked chain of ribs. And we could perform um, more complex chaining. So we could, uh, for example, represent vectors in uh, some sort of balanced trees. But to reduce code size, we decided not to, but this could be a performance enhancement. Uh, of course, scheme objects within the system are also represented as ribs. So for example, here we have the pair, which the first field will contain an arbitrary value. So it could be uh, a, a native integer if it's a number, or it could be a rib that refers to something else. And the second field will be a reference to a pair. Of course, because a pair is a rib, uh, the second field will actually be a reference to a rib. And as you can see, we don't use that many uh, uh, tags. We use tags in the third field to differentiate every element, but we could extend this with uh, user-defined values, for example. And uh, as I mentioned, the program source, once decoded, is also represented as ribs. Um, so here is the representation of most of the uh, upcodes we include in a virtual machine. 
and you see that half of them here uh, pertain to control flow. So beside the conditional branching with the if, uh, we have the jump and call, which are actually encoded in the same uh, in the same with the same opcode, with the difference being that the next instruction will be either nothing for a jump because a jump represents a tail call, and the next will contain an address to uh, the next instruction to execute when returning from the call. If you take notice of the second field here. It is uh, either a slot or a global. In the case of slot, uh, we use an integer to reference a memory in the stack. Uh, and in the case of a global, we're going to use a reference to uh, a symbol. So we're going to use a reference to a rib. And this shows uh, a bit the idea behind the rib, where uh, we can differentiate different type of uh, operands using the fact that a rib can either be an integer or uh, a reference to another rib. Of course, um, allocating all these ribs uh, requires some garbage collection. And uh, if the host language provides a garbage collector, we use the host language garbage collector. But otherwise, for implementations like C, we're going to use uh, our own implementation of a Cheney style stop and copy algorithm. This algorithm, in fact, is implemented in a C virtual machine. And a little implementation detail is that uh, when we use our own virtual, our own garbage collector, we need a tagged representation of integers so we can differentiate uh, if it's a number or a reference to a rib. I also mentioned that we implement some primitives uh, functions so we are able to provide the full scheme implementation. Uh, here's the complete set of primitive implemented by the RVM. So a few of them pertain to arithmetics, two of them pertain to uh, IO operation. Uh, a few pertain to uh, Manipulating rib, of course, because uh, of the incremental compiler, notably. And one important one is the uh, close primitive, which creates a closure by capturing the stack. So quickly going over uh, this example here, this is a snapshot of the factorial function uh, running. Um, and I'm not going to quickly, I'm not going to run over everything because it will take too much time. But uh, you can see the stack in light green here, which refers uh, to a continuation block, which is kind of at the end of the stack frame. The continuation block points to the previous stack frame, uh, the return address also, and uh, the current procedure being uh, evaluated. Um, the return address will point to the code to be executed when it's returning. So you'll see in red here all the uh, code uh, ribs. And, uh, each code rib can, uh, like I said earlier, can point to some uh, some integer value to say uh, the nth symbol to get, or to symbols directly. So, for example, jump to whichever symbol or call the f symbol. Symbols are going to be in gray, and the value of these symbols can be procedures. For example, so you'll find the procedures uh, that are referenced uh, during this program in yellow. So you might think that all these uh, referencing and dereferencing de might not be very performant, but actually we find that our implementation is not is quite performant. So to compare our, our reference implementation, we have the C version compiled with uh, OS, so optimized for size, and we also compare with uh, optimized for speed here that we use as a reference measure in terms of time. So you can see that compared to some implementation like Tiny Scheme, uh, we're quite a bit faster. Uh, on most benchmark, and but compared to more advanced uh, implementation or just differently done implementation, uh, like the SCM implementation or even Chicken Scheme, uh, most of the time we uh, lose by a little bit or win by a little bit. So we're pretty, pretty much neck and neck. But we have one big advantage uh, that is that we don't do type checking. And this leads us into uh, the end of this presentation where I'll talk a bit about the extensions to um, Rubit scheme. So, of course, type checking would be one of them. Uh, one idea to add type checking and to speed up performance would be implementing basic block versioning. And one interesting aspect of uh, adding basic block versioning in the RVM is that since the code is represented as a linked list, we can e very easily insert uh, chunks of code to execute and change the control flow without really having to mess around with too much of the uh, computer's internals. Like, for example, uh, flushing cache and making sure that the code is picked up uh, properly. The main idea behind the Ribbit uh, scheme is to have a customizable embeddable scheme system where we can uh, the programmer can select the trade-off they want between performance, footprint, and memory usage. If you're interested more, 
I invite you to check out the paper or explore the GitHub repository. Thank you.